The art of brewing is as old as civilization itself. It has been traced back to ancient African, Egyptian, and Sumerian tribes. The modern brewing process has changed little since the beginning. The only major changes have been in the technology of brewing and the addition of hops. Before hops were used, brewmasters used herbs and spices to flavor their beers. In October of 2011, Port Jeff Brewery, located in Port Jefferson, New York, opened their doors and began serving their craft beers to eager new patrons. Mike Philbrick, I'm the owner of Port Jeff Brewing Company. My name's Matt Gundrum, I'm the uh, head brewer at Port Jeff Brewing Company in Port Jefferson. And Dan O'Leary, they call me Pete Dan. I'm a pastor and a brewer, that's my two. In the beer world, Port Jeff Brewery would be considered a microbrewery. Well, a microbrewery is pretty much a smaller size brewery. You think of, uh, you know, like one of the bigger breweries, like Budweiser, or even Sierra Nevada, something like that. Uh, they're a macro brewery. They, they brew beer for the masses. We're really just brewing beer for Port Jeff and the surrounding area, Long Island pretty much, uh, a little bit in the New York. Um, as you can see, uh, for some of the other shots you guys had, it's a small brewery. Uh, we only do about 80 barrels uh, total volume of beer in the brewery. Um, whereas a macro brewery does somewhere over, you know, 500,000, a million even barrels per year. You know, Anheuser-Busch has the best brewing equipment and the best brewers in the world. They have the money behind it. They have guys that went to school for, you know, sometimes up to a decade. And they, you know, they do run their business very, very good. And, uh, you know, personally, I don't enjoy all of their products, but I, I know what they do, and I know they do a very good job at it. We talked to the owner and founder of Port Jeff Brewery and asked him why he decided to start up his own microbrewery. I was a home brewer as a hobbyist, and I was doing that for about 10 years. Um, I got in, it, it kind of got to be a hobby out of hand, so to speak, where I was just brewing constantly, uh, finding ways to get rid of the beer so I could brew more beer. Um, and I was looking to start a business. I didn't really know what I wanted to start. I had considered doing home building or some other type of business, and then uh, just kind of clicked that, hey, it might make sense to be to do the brewery thing since I'm so engulfed in it anyway. Even with ambition, skill, and knowledge, the initial costs to start up a brewery are substantial. The cost, the startup cost of a brewery is a lot more than like, let's say, an established restaurant. Let's say I'm an investor and I want to start a restaurant. I walk in and I buy a restaurant and the restaurant already has the tap lines and it already has the refrigerators and the stove and I just need to upgrade stuff. So basically I'm buying that, that outright, uh, the equipment outright that's already used and then I'm also buying the rights to the place, maybe I'm renting the place, I don't know. That's most of your overhead right there to start a restaurant. But with a brewery, uh, you get all of that, you know, the plumbing, the electric, everything you need to do to have the equipment. Plus, normally you're not walking into a place that already has fermenters and already has a brew house. So that stuff is extremely costly. As is the case with any business, there are laws and regulations that must be adhered to. I mean, it's alcohol, so there's plenty of standards. Most of those standards, to be honest with you, are taxes. Um, the more beer you make, the more taxes you have, the quantity of it, how much you sell, the percentages that come at you from left and right, and then, of course, the government wants this piece. Um, and that's the biggest regulation is where the alcohol percentage is and also how much you've sold. Those are regulations. But as far as, like, we're not cracked down on as much as a restaurant would be with health codes. Uh, mostly because we're making fermented beverages, which is alcohol, which mostly kills, alcohol kills everything, so it doesn't really, you know, we don't need to, to have the uh, absolute sanitary place that a, that a restaurant would be, but the fact of the matter is, is, after we clean our place, it's way more sanitary than any of those places, because we clean the heck out, we don't want anything living on that side of the brewery. Mike Philbrick, the owner of Port Jeff Brewery, talks about what it takes to start a microbrewery and what he wants to do with his company. I think in the, the scheme of things, it's, uh, you know, it's going to take itself where it wants to take it. The plan is to really become a multi-state distribution brewer, uh, but probably what they would call a regional brewer. So you have really local, I mean at this point we're really local, and, and the fact that we cover, you know, what, seven counties or six counties in New York, all of which are about 150 miles from here. So. You know, there's still a whole other side of New York and upstate that we could get into or surrounding states and things like that. So it's going to be a little while, but I could see us in, in 10 or 15 years being an East Coast brewery, not just a, you know, not just a small town brewery. Brewing beer is an art form that often goes unnoticed by the general public. 
It takes backbreaking work from lifting heavy barrels of wheat and other ingredients, stirring them up, and years of experience to master this skill. Um, you know, anything that can be interpreted, I feel, is an art form, and, you know, beer can definitely be interpreted. Some people, what I have in my glass right here, would absolutely love. Others would spit it out. They would hate it. Uh, we're just trying to make, you know, each thing its own unique, you know, beautiful thing, just like, uh, you know, a chef or an artist or something like that. I think most people have no idea what goes into making beer, to be honest. You know, we're not in here pressing buttons or doing, I mean, there's a little bit of that, but mostly, it's scrubbing stainless steel. I'd say 90% of the job is scrubbing stainless steel and just janitorial work. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I'm sweaty. I'm, you know, I'm ready to jump in the shower and just go straight to bed in this case. Because there's a lot of labor-intensive hard work. It's not, it's not an easy job. Uh, so people, some people are, they have no idea what's going on, and some people do. So I think the, the average person would need to make it first to really understand how it's, how it's working. You definitely need an education. If you were to bring somebody in here today and say, make beer, they would fail miserably. It's not something that, you know, you can learn in a couple weeks, a couple months even. It takes years and years, really, to fully grasp what goes into beer. There's, there's so many different things about it. Um, you know, and there's so many different facets of beer that you can learn about. You know, you can be a specialist in yeast management. You can be a specialist on the hot side of brewing, on the fermentation side of brewing. Um, here, we do it all. Um, a lot of breweries have guys that are specifically, you know, in one department. They All they do is manage yeast, or all they do is mash in every day. And, you know, here, we're kind of in a situation where we do all facets of the brewing. I think, by and large, most people have no idea what goes into brewing beer. So, um, even folks that consider themselves beer enthusiasts, to some degree, or craft beer drinkers, they probably have a little bit of an idea of what goes into it, but I don't think they understand the daily, you know, I, if you if you pulled people on like 10 basic beer questions or basic brewing questions, I would probably take the bet that only 20% of them would pass. Because their work is typically not seen by the public, many brewmasters feel that their job is underappreciated. I, you know, a little bit, um, it is just beer though, you know, we're not doing, we're not saving the world here, <laughs> you know, and we're not like saving people's lives or anything like that. Um, you know, we are just making beer, uh, which is pretty important to a lot of people, but um, as far as being underappreciated, yeah, a little bit, I guess, it's just, they don't know what goes into it. You know, it is, it can be long days, for sure. Um, I don't think a lot of people realize what a brewer does. I think when, like, when people come to visit us in our tasting room and they try the beer, a lot of times I think that they have the belief that we sit around and drink beer all day. It's pretty apparent that they don't really have an idea of what it, you know, what it takes. They're almost glorified in a way, especially master brewers. Uh, you know, they're, they're icons, so not as much as it used to be, I'll say that. You know, I try and appreciate each style of beer for what it is, each brand of beer for what it is, and I just, you know, there's so many different kinds of beer that I can't really point my finger at it. It's just, you know, the beer I have in my hand right now, just the fact that I get to drink a beer <laughs> is probably, you know, my favorite part of it. Why you to try to criticize me? Just because I'm drunk doesn't mean I can see why you do it. You do it all the time, and that's all right. Cause beer's okay sometimes. okay. we have a beer locator so it tells you, you know, generally other than here where you can taste beer you can find our beer in restaurants bars or what we call home D's which is basically a beverage center or beer store um, and so throughout Long Island you can find them in most of the beer stores 